Welcome back to another episode of Talking with Alicia, a place where I celebrate women in their authentic form. Welcome to another episode of Talking with Alicia. I'm Alicia, and in today's episode, I have with me Sidra Hamayo from Pakistan. Um, I found her through Twitter and she is a very extraordinary woman. She has worked with um, WAR, which is War Against Rape, and she is a humanitarian. So, um, how are you today, Sidra? Thank you so much, Alicia. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much um, for taking the time out to be here. So, can you tell me and the audience what you do and what your work is based on? Uh, Alicia, basically, I am a human rights and women rights activist. Mm-hmm. And um, since 2001, I start working as a volunteer with War Against Rape Lahore. This is an organization which works um, since 1992 mm-hmm. in Lahore and 89 in Karachi. <clears throat> uh, interestingly, this organization was uh, founded by Bina Server and Asma Jangi, Hina Jalani and uh, all the v- feminist women okay. who are at the lead in Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was uh, their idea and uh, that idea came uh, from the one of the letter from a uh, girl who been raped in Karachi in early 80s mm-hmm. and it, uh, 85, uh, 1985 I yeah. think. Mm-hmm. And she was raped and a uh, couple of human rights activists in Karachi, they thought that uh, they should visit uh, that uh, rape survivor in Karachi. Mm-hmm. And uh, they went uh, in the shape of small group and uh, they visited her and <clears throat> they showed uh, their concern about uh, that brutal uh, act by people. Yeah. So... In return, that woman wrote a letter to that uh, group mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> that uh, she really feel uh, empowered that few people visited her mm-hmm. and um, she is being heard by few of the people. Yeah. So in her letter, that encouraged those human rights activists that uh, there should be an enemy organization who mm-hmm. could always listen to the rape survivors. Yeah. So this organization was uh, purely and uh, majorly focusing on the rape survivors. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, as you know, the name is very clear that uh, we were working uh, on this issue. Mm-hmm. And uh, although this issue uh, come, is it can come in under many other issues. Yeah. Like it starts from the gender-based violence and uh, it ends in most uh, brutal form of violence is rape. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> this was the start uh, that how War Against Rape formed into uh, being and uh, then in 2001 I started as a volunteer there. Mm-hmm. And uh, after a couple of years working as a volunteer, <clears throat> yeah. I joined them as a researcher and uh, coordinator and mm-hmm. then I worked uh, purely eight years and uh, nowadays I'm a, as a working committee member of that organization. Mm-hmm. That's amazing, that's amazing. So um, so how did you get into it, into the organization? What made you start? As I shared that uh, my start was as a volunteer. I was um, postgraduate after uh, <clears throat> that uh, I was uh, po- I, I did my post graduation and I was free and I wanted to engage with some uh, volunteer work mm-hmm. and then I joined that organization by the time I had to learn a lot that what organization is doing how they do do their work and many things and uh, <clears throat> by the time I learned that uh, this issue is very severe yeah. very uh, yeah uh, true and uh, <clears throat> women are weak in Pakistan. Before mm-hmm. that, maybe I was not uh, uh, much aware that women is weak because I belong from a very notable family and mm-hmm. um, I I cannot say that uh, very privileged class, but uh, self-made uh, people and uh, very learned people are in my family. Yeah. yeah. So I ha- I am one of uh, I can claim that uh, being privileged that I've been 
less gender discriminated yeah. so this thing i had to understand uh, while working with war and his rape that what is the status of women in pakistan of women in pakistan mm-hmm. so <clears throat> by the time i learned that uh, women are weak women are have no strong voice mm-hmm. and uh, it was a time in pakistan when there was a uh, uh, hadood ordinance was there mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> Hadood ordinance was one of the black law of Pakistan, and uh, unfortunately, because of that law, our one of the governor of Punjab been also assassinated. Yeah. Because once um, in some discussion, uh, he said that it is a black law and. Uh, What is the Hadood law? I I I don't know much yeah, about it. Yeah, Hadood law is a law when uh, in. Uh, the regime of zia ul haq one of the dictator um, he ruled pakistan and he came for 90 days but he ruled around 11 years when was pakistan. this what year was uh, this 10, 10 years i think 10 years and okay. bashar of um, uh, being a chief of army staff came and ruled al- around till 11 years so zia ul haq regime was uh, uh, an era then uh, when women were harassed women uh were not being heard by mm-hmm. uh, by anyone state. yeah so in that uh, era uh, there was a few cases uh, were there against women and that were kept under uh, hadood law yeah. and hadood law the major or main line if i would say that in that law you have a woman if she is raped she has to bring four uh witnesses yeah that uh, she has been raped and oh, those okay. people have seen her that she been raped mm-hmm. so if uh, any any layman any person would say that if she been raped and why four person was standing there and watching her why didn't they stop her yeah they stop that those, those men to uh, rape her yeah so this was a really uh, very bad law yeah and uh, a person who is victim had to produce the witness as well so mm-hmm. it doesn't make any sense no it this doesn't no very very uh, bad bad thing yeah and, it is and women of pakistan stand against it is it and, still uh, um, they said we sh- we need yeah. to repeal this law this this this, this should not happen yeah. and um, uh, asma jahangir the late asma jahangir and yeah. i think uh, through this um, interview or this sitting i must say that my heart cries badly that we lost asma jahan yeah yeah and, definitely uh, pakistan needed her uh, definitely day by day more and more because yeah. on human on the state of human rights we really lost that mentor so uh, asma was at the front row always uh, telling the woman that this law should be repealed and um, now this law is repealed after 2006 and okay. this law is being changed as a women protection act 2006 That's and it. recently in january 2016 mm-hmm. the amendment is also there in the rape law mm-hmm. so uh, after two decades uh, struggle mm-hmm. women of pakistan are now this much secure yeah. that at least they can report this uh, without this, any this witnesses issue and yeah. uh, this incident and then um, uh, government machinery start working on it mm-hmm. although lacunas are there and i think in uh, further discussion i would be able to highlight them yeah thank you so much thank you so um during your time um volunteering and then working what are some experiences that you have faced with women what are some stories or some important issues that you wanted to highlight and talk about yeah majorly since uh, these are the gender based violence uh, issue it is um, a majorly gender based violence uh, issue people discriminate their daughters their sisters their wives being just because of their gender yes uh, now in pakistan um, you can see that uh, everybody has access to have a um, gender scanning uh before the birth of the child mm-hmm. and um very uh, sadly i have to share that uh, people whenever they came to know that okay this is a girl female child they are going to have they 
stop celebrating that birth mm-hmm. and um, this is discrimination goes on generations to generation that they stop giving good food to the Girls. mother oh, who's to be mother and um, they discriminate her uh, in her all the actions sitting uh, resting or talking and everything that oh you are going to give a birth to a baby okay, girl yeah. so the the soul which has been not uh, bur- got birth still but she is being discriminated yeah. and uh, this discrimination goes on with the after the birth of the b- girl child she yeah. get less food she m- did not get opportunity to play with the boys uh, the boundaries are being set for her and um, this uh, this this is this directly connects with the control of the woman yeah. and uh, this this really hurts us that uh, it is us who will decide for ourselves we are human beings we are not commodity mm. and uh, unfortunately women are being treated as a commodity in south asia especially and i think nowadays across the globe it's the situation yeah. is almost same mm. i was reading that uh, today that uh, in south australia uh, two year old girl has been raped uh, there in south australia so two year old girl in pakistan you have seen that uh, the issue of the kasoor girls yeah. that um, uh, more than 100 children has been pornographed and then uh, um, they had been raped and then been murdered so this control yeah. is showing us this day because the two three decades with women is struggling and her absence his presence is counted as nothing she yeah. if she's not never been counted mm-hmm. uh, same is done with the um, uh, our elections as well then uh, in 2013 we have elections um, women of Veer, Banu and uh, our upper area of uh, KP and uh, uh, Khabar Pakhtunkha which is our one of the province uh, women are not supposed to cast the vote mm-hmm. so this is one of the things that significantly I want to share that not only on the sphere of their household but when there is a situation that they should be counted yeah. then there is an yeah, they're not counted. No, yeah. to those women that you ca- you you cannot vote. So uh, these are the issues in Pakistan. Uh, uh, currently, women Not are women. facing, mm-hmm. and uh, their CNIC, their computerized national identity cards are. Uh, not being uh, produced by the families, they they don't want that their woman would be counted, and uh, we are working on it. Uh, many organizations that if you will be counted, then you country will grow because yeah. if I, I will not be counted, then uh, um, for for food or uh, for my living and anything will not not be co- calculated. Mm-hmm. So uh, many organizations are working on this uh, issue as well and. Uh, thanks God, uh, 10 years democracy is also giving us this time that uh, we are uh, in next phase. Uh, this is our pre-election phase yeah. has been started. And uh, in uh, June, I think June, June or July, maybe yeah, we will June. be having a next elections. Yeah, June. Uh, I think in June, uh, uh, probably. Because, yeah, I uh, think it is June. Yeah. In Pakistan. And after that, we will be preparing for the elections. So the, this is another thing. Uh, so um, uh, you can ask here, Miss. Yeah. Um. So, what has your organization personally done? So, what have you personally done, um, to help uh, women? The so. war against rape is uh, uh, working on a focus issue: rape and uh, rape, gang rape, sodomy, molestation, and things, th- issues like that. And we used to support uh, rape survivors. Uh, uh, free medical, legal, and psychological aid. Okay. And um, uh, so, can women the, come to your organization to seek help? Is that what your organization is? So, do women come and seek help? Yeah, there is an entire mechanism about on it. Yeah. Uh, if I go in detail, that if um, uh, normally we go through the newspapers and the news headlines, mm-hmm. that uh, it's if this case is reported, then uh, we take that case and uh, we do our fact finding. 
and uh, through fact finding we can we always offer uh, these three services to the rape survivor and their family because in pakistan women alone cannot take decision on her behalf she ha- always have to take uh, in confidence uh, her family members and sometimes extended family members as well maternal and parent- paternal side uh, members as well mm-hmm. uh, same is with uh, their marriage and their education and their mobility issues mm-hmm. and when this kind of uh, situation is being there that she is raped then definitely she she is not the one who can decide on her behalf mm-hmm. so family has to Uh, decide. Yeah. So what we do is like uh, after our fact finding mission or uh, fact finding visits, we offer uh, medical, legal, and psychological support to them. And uh, many times it happened that uh, they ask for legal help, but not for psychological help mm-hmm. because they don't believe and uh, they have no not enough uh, information about. Oh, psychological okay. support mm-hmm. to the rape survivors mm-hmm. uh, and the reason is this that if i want to educate and uh, people are listening that they they can understand that why psychological support is not on uh, primarily or uh, primarily being taken by the family so the reason behind it that if you are having an headache and i give you a painkiller for headache and you will take that pill and after a while you will say okay i am okay yeah i'm fine mm-hmm. now my headache is gone but the for the psychological and counseling sessions on multiple times that person has to visit the psychologist yeah right yeah and uh, those psychological counseling sessions go on by the time whenever the rape survivor got enough strength to explain because yeah. you cannot touch her okay okay start telling me what 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 happened yeah. to you when like it's not that simple so there yeah. there, there is some the complete signs on it that yeah. psychological sessions and therapies uh, how be uh, led so people don't uh, allow their girls for and they cannot give this much kind of duty with their girls uh, who are being raped to take them for the psychological sessions and like that uh this is this is the kind of for uh, 10 years back i'm telling you that there is no one roof um under one roof uh, no uh, availability of such facilities were there uh, we were always extending this idea to uh, punjab government that yeah. uh, start any project that all facilities should be under one roof okay. and uh, but thanks god that now punjab government has initiated the violence against women center in multan mm-hmm. because south punjab uh, is uh, very high, have high numbers of uh, rape and uh, gang rapes mm-hmm. so they have uh, uh, constructed a, a violence against women center in multan and now women can get medical legal and psychological support under one roof so I, i'm telling you about those times when uh, there was a uh, women protection act was not there there was a huge rule law and war against rape was working a lot for the rape survivors and um, a, there was a very famous uh, uh, case was there which asma jahangir fought that there was a blind woman and she been raped and the court asked her to produce a victim uh, your witnesses Oh. so she was blind and yeah. how she, how can she case yeah was the safia bibi's case the famous one case and uh, maybe on internet you can uh, get some yeah information uh, article on it uh, because uh, i think uh, before 90s or uh, 2000 i we don't have archives uh, about newspapers uh, there so Mm-hmm. maybe in some headlines yeah. or somewhere you will, you will see that safia bibi's case was the eye opener case and asma jangi put her all directions towards it that uh, imagine that woman is blind and you are asked to me. produce four witnesses so this make no, doesn't make any sense no. so uh, it was a time that women were struggling a lot and lots of uh, women who uh been rape had did not get justice and they died in the jails and uh, situation like that so uh, coming to this point that uh, war against rape offers uh, three med- services 
and uh, mostly people take uh, legal service and we have a pro bono lawyers uh, panel in uh, Lahore and Karachi and definitely now uh, many other many, many other cities uh, our human rights activists are there and uh, we refer those cases what's uh, great strength is referring the case as well so if something is not in our limit uh, due to some resources or human resource or uh, financial uh, crunch we request to our human rights activists whoever is working in that area so through them we get uh, for those cases yeah that's amazing that's amazing is it a big organization do you work with a lot of women do a lot of no. women volunteer? Is there every? It's, it's, it's small, a very small. Very small organization. Uh, work with the very small human resource. Oh. Okay. Um, and uh, this is very difficult to understand uh, for the people that why this organization doesn't flourish like many other organizations. Yeah. If we are doing a lot mm-hmm. uh, for the uh, women, a lot. Uh, um, many success stories are there. That uh, conviction rate is there. In 2014, there was an incest case which war against rape fought for two years and uh, that girl was raped by her uh, father Mm. and uh, real father raped her twice and then uh, the girl reported it to her teacher and teacher told her to mother and like that. Uh, That that case... uh, uh, we fought and that father got death penalty and mm-hmm. uh, after one year he died in the jail uh, by his natural death yeah. uh, he didn't uh, got the death uh, penalty. Uh, yeah. punishment but uh, why we are not flourished and like that because one case uh, needs a lot of attention Yeah, and fi- fighting one case in a uh, um, this criminal justice system is a lot of struggle. Yeah, no, long and, process. And uh, day yeah. and night, you have to go to the courts and go for the hearings, and uh, it's not easy. It's mm. really tiring. And mm. uh, uh, yeah, at I... times you are at same time uh, helping those survivors for the counseling sessions if they agree by the time. Uh, if they, their medical issues are there in their medical um, uh, uh, medical legal uh, documentation issue is there so we had to sort it out as well so many cases are like that that, that we have to keep doing our follow-ups as well mm-hmm. so there are a lot of things that uh, uh, I mean uh, I can say that uh, sometimes we don't need um, finances but we need a dedicated staff as well yeah. and uh, uh, donors give uh, funding for one year two year and they then exit yeah. so rape survivor is still there mm-hmm. it doesn't exit it is there mm-hmm. and um, their flashbacks could come right after the day when donor stops giving us any amount and they call us and they call me many times that um uh, now I'm having flashbacks and uh, although you help a lot, but I cannot get rid of it. So these these cases needs ongoing support, yeah. ongoing support. 24-7 sometimes I need to help them. I had to listen their call. At times they are broken on the phone that they are crying and they are telling me that when their family politics is there, their family boycotts are there. People start stigmatizing them. People start isolating them that, okay, your daughter is like being raped and we, we are not going to uh, have you in our clan and family and tribe and like that. So the, the situation which has been through by the, that family, at times it's happening on me, myself as well. So these are the things that uh, people, we need a lot of committed people and ongoing uh, things. Yeah. So there, there is a, a issue that this organization works with small staff and it's a small organization still. Okay, and so it's it's very good of you to be part of it, even especially because it's so small and especially because um, a lot of women, like the women in my family that I know don't work, they're usually at the home 
on looking after their kids so it's it's very very good of you to yeah, do all you. of this thank, thank you. you we really need encouragement and uh, uh, thank you so much it's okay and um during your lifetime have you seen the um condition of women improve or is it very stagnated is it still the same uh, I must say that there is, is huge changes there. Mm. Now, uh, due to electronic and print media, then yeah. social media as well, mm. people are educated. Yeah. They are getting awareness about it. Mm. They are raising their voice against it. And the civ- credit goes to civil society and the social media as well that they really enhance the basic yeah. information towards the advanced information. And uh, people are contributing on in their own capacities. Uh, journalists is there. The social consensus I can see right now in Pakistan about this issue, at least on the women and the rape uh, uh, issue, because uh, people have clear understanding that they will not tolerate this behavior because yeah. it, this behavior is power control related to power control. It is misogynist and these all behaviors which lead towards chauvinist and misogynist they this they are shunned by the people they they are not agree to have it then secondly uh, after 18th amendment in pakistan this amendment was that supposed to be like um, all the provinces have their own powers and they can uh, do any kind of projects in their province and federal government has nothing to do with that so after 18th amendment and all the provinces and uh, provincial assemblies has to uh, pass the laws for the betterment of their province and during that i i witnessed that uh, many parliamentarians and legislators come into uh, political uh, affair and uh, one of the good thing happened in pakistan in the regime of one of the dictator um, Musharraf, yeah. that he uh, allowed uh, the quota system. Thirty-three percent of women can participate in political, politically in uh, provincial assemblies, mm-hmm. which was huge. We no doubt we we really accept, uh, we acknowledge that uh, step. So women participation also counted a lot, and uh, many notable women like Kashma Lata, Rek Marvi, Maimon, and um, uh, Sherry Rahman. Uh, these women uh, played their role very well in yeah. uh, Pakistani women's status and upscaling. Then definitely the presence of uh, Bibi Benazir Bhutto Shaheed mm-hmm. presence was also one of the yeah. best thing happened to Pakistan. Mm-hmm. That uh, she was the first prime minister in Pakistan in uh, yeah. Islamic world and uh, in Pakistan history. Mm-hmm. So that that counted a lot. I can see that uh, after 18 amendment and many legislation has been passed in Pakistan for the women uh, prosperity and betterment. Uh, nowadays we are having a uh, provincial commissions on the status of women. Uh, each province has their its own uh, provincial commission status, uh, status of uh, commission on the status of women, and they have their own chairpersons. So chairpersons are actively working there, and then we have uh, sexual harassment at workplace law mm-hmm. that women are coming at the workplaces and they are participating. And if the behavior of uh, sexual harassment they see, they report to the relevant uh, helplines and they call and they. Now in social media, I can see that women uh, just take out their uh, Facebook and they write uh, that status that uh, somebody harassed yeah. them and like that. And then it went, things got viral Violent, and people yeah. start uh, showing their solidarity with them that mm-hmm. this behavior is not welcome. Mm-hmm. So this is this is an also uh, good thing that th- there was a time that uh, few bunch of people of, of Woman. women were doing a lot of work yeah but nowadays a many women are doing a work for many women Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's um one thing with social media as well the um Zenob situation as well that that flourished through social media as well through Twitter, um people started talking about it. Then media had to cover it, and then that's why government took action on it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Um, do you think you see an improvement with the Zainab situation on child rapes and murderers? Do you think that's influenced? Um, yeah, well, now, nowadays, uh, uh, by, uh, in the last three days, in yeah. past Islamabad, we have had a human rights com- uh, conference in past Islamabad. Yeah. And uh, many many organizations who are working on women rights, child rights, and um, human rights, they, ha- they are very seriously working on this. Um, uh, regarding uh, child abuse and uh, Zainab's case and the Kasur cases, um, we have child uh, uh, abuse uh, laws in Pakistan, but the issue is now the protection mechanism is missing. Mm. So uh, few organizations are seriously working on it to uh, identify and to lay out the child protection mechanism in Pakistan, and uh, then that would be part of uh, uh, law as well. So th- that that is very important thing that we need to sought out that uh, this is a high time that uh, our children uh, if been having this kind of situation then how state will work yeah. so that protection uh, law will definitely work in this regard yes definitely um what do you think that um people can do or even people outside of pakistan like myself can do to improve the situation on women, do you think that any is there anything that we can do? I think uh, first of all, your solidarity with the issues is very important, and uh, these are like uh, you people are like a powerhouse at times to us. That uh, mm-hmm. you people at least ask and you show your interest that you you want to do something for Pakistanis and then. Uh, what suppose uh, specifically supposed to be uh, done in this uh, part is that definitely awareness. Awareness uh, is very important and like um, uh, documenting in audio, video or any kind of these uh, mods uh, that could be disseminated hugely in Pakistan like that people would listen now everyone has mobile phone sets in their hands and uh, listening in small audios is not difficult for anyone mm-hmm. and uh, small messages uh, campaign could be led by anyone who if he somebody is interested in it that even i must say that nowadays uh, if child abuse uh, issue is highlighted by the mainstream media and international media but uh, another very uh, Diff- difficult situation for Pakistani women is they are facing domestic violence yeah. and uh, that domestic violence leads to the financial uh, abuse mm. because uh, when she is not um, getting any uh, amount to cook food for her children mm. and her family and for herself definitely there will be a conflict in the fam- in the, in the uh, family and they will, uh, the consequences is that women has to face the domestic violence. So uh, these kind of messages, I think uh, rather going that what is taken by the media, uh, working on that side only, I think that we need to work on domestic violence as well because yeah. that is also a very gross kind of issue and uh, it should be addressed uh, vice versa. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, what about women in education? Um, you've been to university. What um, what did you study there? Uh, I uh, did my post graduation from Government College Lahore. It is um, uh, I'm Ravian, uh, and I passed in uh, my post graduation in Urdu literature. Urdu literature. That's very good. Um. Do you think um, there's a lot of women in education? Did you see a lot of women studying when you were there? Is it pretty equal? Or is there, yeah. again, more yeah. male-dominated? Yeah, it, now women are more in uh, education and post-graduation uh, level. And uh, girls are there in universities. But it is uh, subject to the mega cities, especially. Mm. Uh, because there is a huge uh, divide in Pakistan about rural and urban cities. So if we, if I call that uh, metropolitan cities of Pakistan, which is like 
Lahore, Karachi, Islamabad, Peshawar, and uh, Faisalabad, and uh, uh, Quetta. Yeah. These are the metropolitan cities. Mm-hmm. So here, universities are also there, and uh, people are uh, under. People can understand now that their girl should go to universities, and girls are fighting for their education as well, and they are. Uh, studying uh, many subjects, they are becoming engineers. They are journalists. They are uh, they are identifying their uh, yeah. spaces, mm-hmm. and uh, they 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 are very clear about their career. And the girls are career oriented in Pakistan right now. I can see my uh, in my uh, current office as well that girls aged just uh, 24, 25 who have just past their masters or uh, graduation even they are joining the offices they are doing brilliant job brilliant mm-hmm. work so difference is there so no are, are more women um getting into jobs as well or do a lot of women um stop after they get the degree women ha- is always has to do struggle for the getting jobs and getting permission because no doubt uh families doesn't allow them easily because if one case is been reported on mainstream media that girl has been harassed in uh, bus or any uh, cab or anywhere and even the neighbor country if so- happen something like that same news is there like yeah. you can uh, recall the daily bus uh, rape case that the girl been uh, raped in bus and so it has impact in our country as well that people mm. start Uh, telling their girls that can't Stay don't on. go anywhere, and mm-hmm. they think that hiding their girls and putting their girls into their houses will uh, change the scenario. But mm-hmm. it's definitely it's not the case that no. uh, um, things will not change. That girls will be living in this, start living in their house, and uh, uh, evil will uh, stop yeah. working. So they, 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 there is a time that uh, uh, people and especially the men has to decide is that if they will want a peaceful pakistan peaceful country peaceful house they need to admit their girls in your schools and universities and colleges and then let the work let them grow and uh, secondly there is another huge thing need to be understand that people have to get aware on the laws as well because civil society is working on the laws and amendments as well so now the people should know about their laws and then the rule of law by the time will definitely give them a space that when people will start claiming and telling to the uh, law enforcement agencies that mm-hmm. look i i am citizen of pakistan and i uh, i have this right and nobody can uh, be Take like it. this mm-hmm. with me Mm-hmm. so uh, on working uh, on regarding the working woman i think uh, women protection act and uh, protection against harassment at workplace is a remarkable achievement of pakistani women yeah. another thing that i think is um that women working women face is the fact that they pressurized to get married and have children as well so um they're like how can you work you're not going to look after your children a lot whereas um men don't have that same responsibility either so i feel yeah. like a lot of women yeah, do it, have to quit work it's related to the culture because uh, the culture of pakistan is that uh, gender defined roles are there that women supposed to do this that she has to clean the house she has to cook the food she has to mop the floor she has to wash the dishes and the clothes so these are the gender defined roles are being assigned to the pakistani woman and nowadays people are understanding that okay work uh, should be distributed and uh, if uh, people because nowadays inflation high is very high and uh, pe- both uh, couple couple are working partners are working and they have decided and uh, this is a mutual understanding of the people that you will work also i will go for work and uh, we will take uh, any uh, daycare center to get our child there and come back and do our work so people are think changing uh, right now but uh, of course on the girls part and the women part they have to struggle a lot because this this is a huge commitment they they, they are delivering that they are 
no doubt women are multitaskers and uh, they are good in uh, handling uh, these two uh, fields that mm-hmm. but still uh, they are they have to struggle yes yes um out of all the issues so um do you think honor killings are a big issue in for women in pakistan right now or has it yes, it is a very serious uh, issue in pakistan and um, on a very minor thing that if your woman is listening a phone call which number is not feeded in that phone phone set and uh, uh, she's li- uh, just attending that call many cases are being reported in such a situation that she been uh, murdered by father or cousin or friend or um, the uh, the brother especially brother used to uh, kill and the father so this is a very uh, serious uh, situation about uh, honor killing in pakistan that uh, people are not understanding that woman is a human and they are taking it as a matter of only honor and they they easily kill and murder their girls and uh, their women on this issue so we have a um, law on uh, honor killing as well and uh, there was a little bit uh, lacuna in that law at that time and uh, i would like to highlight that uh, lacuna that uh, a father and a brother uh, can uh, co- get a compromise on the case if uh, brother murdered her sister then father can wave off and he can go to court and uh, he can say that uh, i i'm going to compromise on it and i'm not uh, going to uh, pursue this case yeah. anymore mm-hmm. and uh, he can be okay that uh, her uh, his son uh, did this uh, murder Mm-hmm. so uh, this is this is a major thing that uh, in in this uh, uh, law it has been not uh, taken care of and uh, people girls are being murdered and then the murderer is walking openly because he's uh, brother of the that girl and father uh, just uh, had a compromise on it so uh, their amendments are there and uh, that that law will also be repealed because it is very important that uh, we we don't want that our girls could be murdered easily and then it is been compromised yeah that is um that is very true and um malala is um a kind of figurehead she's one of the pakistani women that um has blown up and everyone around the world knows about her and everyone around the world knows about swad and the what happened with the taliban um do you think she has made that much impact in pakistan as she had made awareness around the world or is it just one sided i i would like to answer this question in two parts and yeah. first of all you have to keep in your mind about the status of women which i am telling you Um, since uh, we started this chat or uh, that women status is very weak in pakistan women are being subject to the gender based violence and the status of women is not strong so malala in malala's case the same thing happened that malala was a girl and she been assassinated and uh, by the by luck or by chance that has been filmed as well that when she been assassinated it was in the media and like that so people uh, maybe are unable to understand that how media was also be- was becoming a power in pakistan same time when malala been assassinated that it was a time that uh, social media was coming in pakistan and the electronic media was having lots of means to uh, broadcast themselves so it was uh, filmed and people are unable to digest that thing that how it is been reported and secondly the women status they they compare it that yeah. malala is a girl so they always get a chance to attack her 
which is which again show the mentality of the those people that wa- that they are attack not attacking malala actually they are attack attacking on the woman because yeah. woman is always a soft target to them that they they don't want to see woman at high places that because uh, when their uh, leader in benazir bhutto has been assassinated and state yeah. has state trick was very weak and they still now uh, we can listen that uh, uh, taliban were the responsible and xyz was responsible and like that so they don't have any good uh, leader women leaders uh, which we, they can think about that women can get these prestigious um uh, respect and the prestigious uh, platforms to uh, talk with the people and people are unable to understand that what is malala's fight malala's fight is not pakistani men malala's fight is against the 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 mindset of the people yeah. that who are against the education of mm-hmm. the women because people don't want that woman will be educated aware and she have some knowledge because a girl who have a knowledge she is a power yeah. right yeah. and men can unfortunately yeah. cannot digest it in yeah. pakistan because definitely they they have um, narrow mindedness or maybe what whatever the name you can would like to say Be- because at times i feel that misogynist and chauvinism is also we we cannot generalize all the men in pakistan because many men are progressive they are mm-hmm. liberal they they want that women of their family would grow so coming back to malala's point that what i think that malala's fight is against the 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 mindset of those people who are not in favor of pakistani women that she could get education and like she belongs from a uh, northern area sawat here yeah. uh, boundaries of women has been uh, allocated by the head of the family members and they don't allow women to go study read even play the girls cannot play in their streets because mm. uh, they 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 know their rivals and they know their men very well that they they will not spare our daughters that's yeah. why they want to put their daughters in their houses but they don't want to fix those boys that who are mm-hmm. always messing around mm-hmm. so i think that that problem is not with the malala problem is with the, with those men yeah. who are always uh, making a trouble for the women in pakistan that mm-hmm. if she is going out they are um, uh, trying to um, pass any sentence to her they are always harassing them they they want to walk and touch the woman they always want to criticize that even she is in full uh, hijab or abaya that mm-hmm. still they they cannot tolerate women in, uh, yeah. in in the public spaces so the problem is with the mindset and i think banala is doing great yeah. and uh, had soft to her courage that uh, after getting lots of uh, negativity uh, she still uh, yeah. standing against the odds yeah so overall you think there's a negative perception of malala in pakistan because of those men yeah i i can see i can see that there yeah. is a, a lot of negative uh, perception about her mm-hmm. but uh, truly i i would really tell you that pakistan society is quite judgmental yeah uh, yeah they mm-hmm. easily uh, perceive Get offended anything. yeah and they 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 are stick to it unfortunately mm-hmm. and uh, i think this is related to the education and awareness as well and that's why they are unable to conclude the things but they can they if they conclude the things they always conclude the things in a very neg- negative way yeah. so uh, perception is uh, bad against her but uh, i think uh, her cause is very strong and yeah. right and uh, we human rights activists really believe that she's struggling a lot and uh, we are always standing by her side yeah same that's that's very good and um what are some of the women that you look up to and why um uh, like i shared that uh, asma jangi is yes. one of those that i look always uh, as a my mentor and like that then her sister hina jahan hina jilani she is one of the great uh, lawyer and women and courageous women 
then uh, dr fazia uh, said is one of uh, women who is uh, one of uh, prominent women in pakistan that's that's very good that's very and um that's all the questions that i have to um ask do you have any more um anything to add or anything that you would like to ask me or I would say that thank you so much for uh, it's okay. giving me this chance that uh, no, I could able to speak to you. No, and, thank uh, you for uh, taking the time. 